Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now to access the internet freely in China, you're going to need a VPN to help you get around the Great Firewall of China, which effectively limits access to many domains such as Netflix, Instagram, and Facebook. While this firewall has gotten so advanced that it can limit access to almost all VPN services out there, including some of the top VPNs like NordVPN, ViperVPN, and PIA, this does not apply to ExpressVPN. I was able to use it in mainland China to access the internet freely, though there are a few steps I needed to take to get it to effectively work there. And so in this video, I'll be showing you step-by-step step how to set up ExpressVPN in China, and I'll also be guiding you through all the important settings and features that you're gonna need. And of course, if you're interested in ExpressVPN, you'll find all the useful links, including a special discount in the description below. Okay, so first of all, the cell provider that you're gonna be using in China plays a huge role in ExpressVPN actually working there. You see, China has three main cell providers, which are China Telecom, China Mobile, and China Unicom. All three of these cell providers have their own server data and rules. And while one might allow access to ExpressVPN, the other might not. At the time of making this video, ExpressVPN works fine with both China Telecom and China Mobile. However, in a couple of months, this might not be the case anymore. So I highly recommend you contact ExpressVPN support via email to ask about which cell provider is best to use at that time. Now, according to my tests between China Telecom and China Mobile, China Telecom seems to be a much safer option as they have a less strict network environment, and you can also reach the main ExpressVPN page without any issues. And in case you decide to go with China Telecom, you can click the link in the description, which will take you directly to the ExpressVPN website and automatically apply a discount on your subscription. So make sure to check that out if you want to save some money. But in case you decide to go for China Mobile, or if the ExpressVPN website is not accessible with China Telecom, you can use the alternate domain to reach their website, set up your account, and get a subscription. I'll leave the link to that in the description below. One thing you should note, however, is that ExpressVPN changes this alternate domain from time to time to get around the Great Firewall. So in case this domain does not work out, you can either search for the current alternate domain online, or simply ask their customer support agents via email, and they'll get you sorted out. Alright, now that you've reached the website, click on Get ExpressVPN. Choose the subscription that suits your needs and complete the checkout process. Once the checkout is complete, you'll be redirected to a page where you can download the ExpressVPN app and you'll also receive an activation code via email, which you're going to be using later. Now download the ExpressVPN app and follow the on-screen instructions to finish the installation as they're pretty straightforward. Once the installation is complete, they'll ask you for your activation code. So copy paste it from your email and your ExpressVPN app will be good to go. Now to connect to a VPN server, you can click on the on button and it will automatically connect you to the closest server with the best latency so that you can access the internet freely. But in case you have a specific country in mind, you can click on the settings icon on the top left, go to all locations and search for the country you're trying to connect to. Then click on the country and press the on button to connect to the VPN server. And here you have a lot of servers to choose from. In fact, you have over 3000 servers spread across 105 countries, which is a lot. And in case there are some countries that you're gonna be connecting to regularly, you can click on the star icon right beside the country name to add it to your home screen so that you can access them much faster. All right, now that your ExpressVPN app is all set and you know how to connect to a VPN server, let me show you how to use some of the most important features it has to offer. Starting with the kill switch, also known as network lock, this is gonna be the most important feature ExpressVPN has to offer, especially in censorship heavy countries like China. That's because this kill switch can prevent any of your data from leaking over to your ISP or government by immediately severing your internet connection should you accidentally disconnect from the VPN server. You can find this feature by clicking on the settings icon on the top left, going to general, and you'll find it right above the split tunneling feature. The kill switch is gonna be on by default, and I recommend you keep it on for utmost security and anonymity. Now, right under the kill switch, you'll find a feature called split tunneling, which allows you to decide which apps go through the VPN tunnel and which ones use your regular connection. And there are two options you can use here. You can either set all of your connections to be encrypted by the VPN, except certain apps that you handpick, or you can do the exact opposite and select specific apps to use the VPN while your entire connection remains outside the VPN tunnel. So just to give you an example, you can watch your local iQIYI shows using your normal connection, but have a Chrome tab using the VPN to access Instagram and Facebook. All right, now moving on to the protocols tab. You have several options to choose from, and these are gonna be auto, which is the default option, lightweight UDP and TCP, as well as open VPN, UDP and TCP. Out of these five options, Lightway UDP is the best performing protocol, and it's the one to use to guarantee you the best speed possible. However, I recommend you keep this set on the default auto option, since I've spoken to ExpressVPN, and they recommend users keep all the settings on default, including the protocol, as they're the most optimal to use in China, so keep that in mind. And lastly, we have the Advanced Protection tab, which is a relatively new feature ExpressVPN has added. Here you can set the VPN to block ads, trackers, as well as malicious sites. And at the bottom, you have the Block Adult Sites option, which can be used as sort of a parental control tool if you have kids running around the house. 
And that's pretty much everything you need to know about setting up ExpressVPN and getting it to work in China, as well as how to use its most important features to enhance your security. Now, just to give you a brief overview of ExpressVPN, it's simply one of the easiest VPNs to use. It starts off very quickly, and it's also very fast when it comes to connecting to servers. At most, it takes about two seconds. As I mentioned earlier, you've got 105 countries at your disposal, and that's way more than you need, especially if you'd like to stream content from all over the world. Speaking of which, ExpressVPN servers are fully compatible with streaming and torrenting, and I was able to access streaming services like Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Prime Video. And when it comes to torrenting, it fully protects your device's IP address and private information. Essentially, whatever it is that you're doing online cannot be interfered with, and nobody, including your ISP or government, will be able to see what you're doing online. And this is specifically because of ExpressVPN's strict no-logs policy which its effectiveness was accidentally proven in 2017 when the Turkish government seized one of ExpressVPN's servers as part of an investigation, but they were still unable to access or extract any information from that server thanks to ExpressVPN's true no-logs policy. And this is definitely great proof that ExpressVPN indeed upholds the integrity of their users' privacy. Now, this is just a brief overview, but if you'd like to know more about ExpressVPN with regards to privacy policy, speed, streaming, and torrenting capabilities, as well as security and features, you'll find an in-depth review in the description down below. And that'll be all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description to grab yourself the best discount possible. Besides that, like and subscribe to see more of these videos, and let me know in the comments if there's anything cybersecurity you'd like me to cover. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.